the greatest thing I learned today was what a privilege it is to have self-awareness. I think all of us shared stories from different parts of our life where we were trying to make it happen, but we didn't have all the tools. And I'm feeling right now, I want to encourage all of y'all, I feel like we have the tools and more tools are coming, but what a powerful place to be in right now. And even with the viewers to use the tools we have, to use the stories from our past, to generate more using all of this awareness and to delegate as appropriate. That self-awareness is just, it's magical. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Vixen Boys. Today, put your seatbelt on because we are coming to you with a ton of energy. I absolutely love our panel today. And it's so appropriate because, you know, this is our first panel conversation. And you're going to hear four of us very vivacious women talking about time, energy, and confidence management. So if you need a booster in any of these, which by the way, we all do at some point, you definitely want to tune in today, hear the wisdom of our panel about how they manage. Each of them do work that has to do with time, energy, or confidence management. So get your notepads ready. If you're out and about, get your phone ready to take notes. I know you're going to get a ton of takeaways from today. So today I have joining me Emma Mills. So Emma is the founder of My PA. She is normally based in the UK and she has, she is on her way to being or already the largest provider of PAs in the UK. Now, in the UK, they call it a PA. It's what in the States we would call an executive assistant. So if you haven't watched in a couple of weeks, Emma and my one-on-one interview is coming out and we touch on the difference between executive assistants and admins. Really important. If you struggled with getting the right match, tune in, follow Emma. She puts out a ton of great content. It would be really beautiful. So Emma's coming to us today from Spain so we can all be jealous, except I'll be there with her next week. So (laughs) welcome, (laughs) Emma. So glad to have you today. Thank you, April. Thanks so, so much so much for having me today. And I'm blessed that I can be coming to you from Spain today and talking about time management. Like, you know, you know, like I've been working on my own time management to spend the next month here. So hopefully we can delve into that a little bit about how that's happened. So amazing. And we also have Lacey Pruitt with us. Lacey is an author, yoga instructor, and motivational speaker. Her two books, Elevate and High Performance Detox, are amazing, which, by the way, if you'd like a complimentary signed copy, here's how you get it. Go to Apple or Spotify, leave us a review. You can also do the same on YouTube, leave a comment on the shorts of this episode, and just take a screenshot and send it to my team, team at Vixen Gathering. And so, Lacey, thank you. We'd love to get your books out there. So if you love what Lacey has to say today, please shoot us that screenshot and we are excited to send you one of her books. Awesome. So Lacey, so happy to have you. Are you home in Texas today? I am home in Texas and it's thankfully getting cooler. So I'm excited about that. Refreshing. (laughs) I like it. And finally, last but for sure not least, we have Kiera Doyle, who is the founder of Meeting Your Magic. So Kiera is a human design specialist, and you've probably heard her episode already. Same with Lacey. If you have not, please go check out their individual episodes. Tons of wisdom. And you will see that Kiera has quite the background, which I love because I always think everything we do leads us to what we're doing in this moment. And Kira's a perfect epitome of that. So Kira, welcome. Are you coming to us from home in Connecticut today? I am coming to you from my studio in Connecticut, and it is also pretty chilly here today. Wow, It's like in the low 60s. 
Oh. So definitely feel those fall vibes coming, coming in, but I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. It's my excitement. Yes, it's raining here in Nashville today, so not very <laughs> fun. But I have to admit, fall is my favorite season. It always has been, and not just because of pumpkin spice, but there is something very refreshing about fall. It kind of comes in, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think of spring as a new beginning. I think that way about fall, and I really love gearing up for the end of the year. So it's so amazing. We can chat about that today. We still have months left into the year. So if you're listening to us, you know, I don't know about y'all, but one thing that frustrates me sometimes with my clients is they're already thinking forward to the next year at this point, right? And so I always am like, hey, no, no, we have months left in this mm -hmm. year. Let's see how we can take advantage of this and at the same time get our plan in place for next year. And I love that we were talking about the fall because if you're listening, keep in mind today, these are tips. Kira is going to talk about different energy types. And I think when you're talking about time management, energy management, and confidence management, really understanding yourself, how you're built, and also even your biorhythm comes into play. So I kind of hated it when all these books came out, like the 5 a.m. routine, etc., which I trained myself to be a morning person. Mm -hmm. But not everyone operates best then. So I'd love to start there. And Kiara, this might have changed for you. But what time do you wake up in the morning? Do you have a standard time you wake up or do you kind of go naturally? So Kira, we'll start with you. Yeah. Okay. So I used to be the earliest bird, like the sign of the sun rising. We lived on the East River in New York City. So I'd be up to watch the sunrise. I'd see it start coming through the blinds. And it was like, my favorite time of the day to sneak out and just watch it come up and have my coffee and do my journaling. And when we, when we moved last summer out of the, out of the city to the suburbs, I was so excited just to have space and to have like my own studio and to have like, so I would be I giddy, like get out, make my coffee, my dog and I would be in the yard, maybe walk to the beach and just like have these delicious mornings. And since being pregnant, I'm now in my second trimester. Yay. I sleep till 8 a.m. Like I, I can't I get it. my body up and I don't try to, I don't have an alarm. I think that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You don't have to force yourself. And I don't go to bed late. I go to bed earlier than I did before. <laughs> and I usually take a nap during the day. So I'm just a sleeper right now. And I've just had to adjust, you know, my expectations mm -hmm. for myself to be on. And I still steal, even if it's five minutes to just like anchor in and be alone, I still take it. Love whereas it. I used to have like 50 minutes or, you know, an hour and a half. Now I, it's, it's these like micro doses of, of my me time, but I, I really prioritize them because they set the standard for the rest of the day. No, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Lacey, how about you? Well, it's funny. I, trained myself in corporate America to get up at 4.30 to get my workout in, to get my journaling in, to get all the things in because that was my magic morning back then. Yeah. But it did really set my day up for success. So I'm grateful for that routine and that pattern. But when I became, when I went into business for myself, I uh, didn't have that routine. So at first, I let myself sleep until, uh, I think naturally my body would sleep till 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. That's just I don't know why, but that's just my, my bio rhythm. And then I would start the day, but then I was a night owl. Yeah. I did that for a while, but then I realized my best writing time is early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I did this side swipe trying to figure out my own, I guess it's self-awareness. So right now I do get up at 7am mm -hmm. and it feels pleasant. I won't say that I don't need an alarm every day. Sometimes I do if it's been a late evening with, you know, a dinner or gala, but 7am, I know it's my creative time. So that means a lot to me as a writer. So I hold that sacred. And then, yes, I go to sleep embarrassingly about 930. <laughs> and there's no reason. <laughs> no, my goal bedtime is I like to get in bed between eight and nine. I am by no yeah. means hitting that now. But if it's a night where I'm like, ooh, I can take a bath and climb in bed mm -hmm. and like read a book. I'm yeah. like so excited. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I affirmed myself. We had a wedding over the weekend. I stayed up till midnight and nothing went in my flow state the next day. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> I totally hear you. Eva, how yeah. about you? So first of all, you're staying in Spain for a month or how long are you guys in Spain instead of the UK? Yeah, no, it's a month. Yeah. 
Yeah. So first of all, share with us when you normally wake up. And then I'm curious if that changed when you're in Spain, because I know dinner, everything there is so much later, right? Culturally, the timing (laughs) is so different. So just kind of share with us what you normally do. And did you have to adjust? So for me, I think the thing that drives the time that I wake up is the time that I'm going to bed because I know that if I don't have eight hours throughout the night, then the next day is not going to be optimum for me. So, you know, if I'm going to bed at 10 or at nine, the same thing still happens. I'll set my alarm for eight hours later. Like this week, we arrived here on Sunday night and, you know, it's new surroundings. Like I've not slept quite as well one of the nights. And then the next day, I'm just a completely different version of myself. So the time I get up definitely is driven by having eight hours sleep because that is like the best thing for Emma. And then similar to Lacey in that, I know that as soon as I get up, that is my optimum time to do things. So I've done the whole thing, like you said, like the 5am club, uh, going to the gym first, journaling. But what I've actually found is I I kind of feel like a bit of frustration of, okay, I know these things are great for me, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean I have to do them first mm-hmm. thing. So I, I often take that first 60, 90 minutes to do like the most important task for the day or the hardest thing. So like this morning, I was creating content for a presentation I'm giving tomorrow. And that's like the first thing I'm doing this morning. And then after I've done my 60, 90 minutes, then I like make my coffee, walk Ralph, you know, go out and have a walk or go to the gym or go for a run. Like, I like to kind of get that just, and it's, I don't know, maybe some people think, okay, we're getting getting out of bed, having the coffee and going doing a task is maybe not, I don't know, the right thing to do. But for me, it feels like a good use of my energy first thing to go. Like I'm totally refreshed, focused, I'm just going to get it done. And then I'm going to enjoy my morning routine after it. So that, yeah, that's how it works for me. Yeah, no, I love that. So I was a night owl in college. My most productive time was like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. when I wrote Mm -hmm. all my papers, studied for everything. I studied for the LSAT during that time when I was in college. And so I was a very late morning person. And then at some point in my financial career, I noticed that all of my mentors and everyone who was successful woke up early. So I said, okay, I have to train myself to wake up early. And so early, I'd say is like six then. And then somehow in the last few years, I started getting up at 446. Because I know everyone thinks that's so weird, but I don't like (laughs) odd numbers. So I either have to wake up at four something or six something because I find for me personally, if I wake up between five and six and seven and eight, I think it has to do with your cortisol levels. Like I feel stressed. So I know if I don't make it up by five, I'm going to sleep at least till six, right? So I just really think pay attention to your body. Your body is so wise, Mm. like really just listen to your body and see what's going on. And then my favorite thing is I'm pretty structured during the week because I have to, I meet with team, I meet with clients, I'm recording podcasts. So I, I like to get a lot in and I kind of fade by four. So I try to jam it in. So like I have either, I just cut it off at four or take off. But my new thing is I schedule nothing on Friday. And I love that because Mm -hmm. I used to be like you ladies where the morning was my creative time. But now because I'm meeting with so many time, I use that time to prepare. So I've given myself all day Friday with no schedule. I can be creative. I can write something, record something, go make breakfast, go to Pilates, like whatever. And so now I really look forward to that time. Like I love that day where I'm not structured. And my my other treat is not setting the alarm on the weekend, although I wish I could actually sleep late. I can't, but it's just nice not hearing that alarm, right? I think most of yeah. you mentioned that. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that that conversation. So my next question is, well, Kira, before we move on, when we talk about human design... How does that play into, by the way, if they do not know their human design, I want you to pause now, (laughs) go to our resource page. If you go to Kira's website, you can get a complimentary download, correct? And it's going to tell you your human design. So just put us on pause, go run that. And then as we're talking, it's going to make a lot more sense and be relevant to you. So Kira, how does human design play into like these biorhythms? And it's not just bio rhythms, but also when we're most productive, when we're most creative, when we're most loving, like there are definitely rhythms to how we are, right? Yeah. So our our human design energy type 
it's essentially a blueprint of our energetic makeup. And we all have a unique blueprint. And there are five overarching energy types. And some of us are designed to really like kind of hit the ground running with our energy all day. Emma, Lacey, do you, do y'all know your energy types? No, I don't. I'm getting like generator vibes from actually both of you, (laughs) but for types that are generators, I'm so curious to hear your types, but we kind of like turn on and then we turn off. So for me, it's about like emptying my tank of gas at the end of the day, right? So there's uh, generators and manifesting generators. We both have what's called sacral energy and sacral energy really produces like an engine, just like constant energy all day. And as long as we're using our energy in a way that fulfills us like creatively and with our family, like we're feeling fulfilled and satisfied, the energy will just continue to regenerate and will get us through the whole day. And we're meant to like use every drop of it or we can't sleep. So I personally fall asleep every single night, like mid reading a book. Like I use it down to the last drop or I could be sitting on the couch with my husband. He jokes that I have narcolepsy. He literally (laughs) is like, something is wrong with you because we could be watching either our favorite series or like a horror film. And like, they could come with like the knife, like ready to kill this person (laughs) and I'll just pass out. Like when I'm done, I'm done. And I I just turn off when my engine is done, it's done. And my mom growing up, she always said the same thing. Like you could be in the middle of a conversation with her and she'd be like, it's over. Right. (laughs) So there's this sort of like this, this idea, like that the engine runs out of gas, we're done for the day, but it's really important for us that we don't try to put ourselves to bed at a specific time. Like the time is when you know it's time. Mm -hmm. Like you just feel it. You're like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to go upstairs and go to bed. We have manifestors who they're not sacral beings, but they do have access to energy through their defined motor center that their throat connects to. And they have like energy that sort of pulses. So they'd be the ones that go on like an energetic wave. Like maybe they're like really turned on for a couple of days and they're going to stay up all night and they're going to create the things they're going to make and their energy is like super wired. And then they're going to sleep for a couple of days. I think of them as like highly creative, super impactful people. They also could be really disciplined and be like, I'm up every day at five, but then they are going to turn off like later on in the day because their energy is not quite as sustained as the sacral engine. The sacral of the manifesting generators, like it rules the world. It is like the dominating, we think of like that nine to five corporate life, like that's because the generators could do it. Like (laughs) we're the ones that had the energy to persevere. So for manifestors, it's about actually allowing yourself to go in pulses and to go in waves and not to have like a rigidity to your schedule so much so that if you want to overwork, overwork. Perfect. If you have the energy to do it, do it. Now you want to take a couple days and like be dead to the world. Beautiful. That's them riding their, their creative wave. And then we have the projectors, April, Mm -hmm. like yourself, you're a projector. Projectors are a little bit more consistent. It's not like it's on and then it's off, but it really depends on the defined energy centers inside of the projector's body of the consistent energy they'll have access to or not. So each projector's chart varies so much. And I think one of the cliches you hear when you follow human design is like, if you're a projector, you need to rest. You can't work very long. That's actually not true for all projector types. Some projectors have access to root center energy, or maybe there's another motor center in their body that's producing consistent energy every single day. And they're actually going to have a little bit like more gas in the tank to push through and do things. April, I can't remember your chart specifically, but I feel like you are an energy projector with some of those energies defined because you are like the way you show up and the energy you have and the capacity you hold, like there's something in there that's fueling and driving you. But some projectors will only take energy from their environment. Mm -hmm. So they'll take energy from everybody else. So it can be really easy for a super energetically open projector to go into an office, like a nine to five office, and to pick up on the sacral energy of everybody around them and to take on the most tasks and say yes to everything. And of course I'll do it and to work late, but then they end up having these huge periods of time where they just crash Mm -hmm. because it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's just not sustainable. It's borrowed energy. A lot of the projectors I know in my life, super successful, but they have like the highest rates of being sick, the highest risk of burnout. 
They're the ones that you go on a vacation with them. If anyone has a projector in their life, like my brother, for an example, or some of my good friends, and they'll just sleep the whole time. You're like, we're on vacation, but they're just done because they're so exhausted from the energy excursions they make throughout the rest of their weeks. And lastly, we have reflectors and reflectors are kind of similar to projectors in the sense of there is no consistent energy. So it really has to do with like who they're around, the energy they're picking up. And it's more important for reflectors to rest and projectors generally to give yourselves like periods of time where you focus your energy. And I will say this on projectors, the efficiency of projectors is so potent. Mm. So it's really about the potency and the focus and the depth in which you create times to work, like time blocks, and then giving yourself the rest of the day. Like I love how April's like, I cram it in and then I'm done at four. Why? Because from 10 to four, April gets more done than the rest of us get done all week. And if you were trying to force yourself to follow the 5 a.m. schedule or whatever it is, right, or the nine to five schedule and force yourself to sit, you're just draining energy, but you're not actually using it in the most potent way. So This is from an overarching perspective. These are the five types. And then within each person's type individually, there are nuances. So if you're listening and you're like, I don't fully relate, there's probably a nuanced aspect to your chart, but it is a pretty good rule of thumb we can say, at least when it comes to sleep and wake up times. For generators and manifesting generators, go to bed when you are completely exhausted. Mm -hmm. Burn every last ounce of the gas in your tank because if you don't, you're gonna toss and turn and overthink all night until you're done. And then if you are a non-energy type, a manifester or a projector or reflector, go to bed about an hour before you're totally exhausted Mm -hmm. or at least create like a wind down routine before you're, you know, I love April says the bath, something to start allowing the energy that you picked up throughout the day to work its way out of your body so that when you finally close your eyes to rest, you can actually get into a deep restorative sleep versus as soon as you close your eyes to rest, now you're getting rid of all the energy you picked up throughout the day. So like a nice wind down routine is beautiful for the non-energy beings. Whereas a generator, manifesting generator, I could have like a cup of coffee, a vodka soda, and <laughs> pass out. Like it's like it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna knock out. <laughs> but. That's a little bit extreme. <laughs> but yeah, so those would be my general rules of them. So if you're listening, here's what I recommend. And I'm gonna send both of you to take the assessment too, and we'll include it in the show notes. That'll be fun to share what we all are as people are talking. But So do the complimentary download, but if you're attracted to what Kira's saying, I highly recommend it's paid time with her. Her time is valuable, but that's how I met Kira. And I I think you gave me extra time because we just hit it off. We just kept talking, talking, talking. (laughs) And every time I talk to her, we're talking about this and I still learn something new every time. So for example, today you helped me understand when I was young, I would crash because I didn't manage that. And I would just crash and shut the world out. And I, after I took the bar exam, for example, we went to Destin, Florida, and I was wrapped in a down comforter on the beach the whole time. I was just like (laughs) done, right? But now I've learned how to protect my energy and I don't do that. But it's funny, we were just at the Vixen Mastermind retreat and, you know, we hit a certain point and I just looked, I said, okay, guys, I hit my wall. I'll see you tomorrow. And I like leave. And then my co facilitator was like, I love love how you can just do that. But I know, I mean, my team was here after our launch party and they wanted to go out. I was like, guys, I'm tired. I have to go home. And literally by the time we got home, I was crying. I was so tired because I stayed out like 30 more minutes, right? So as we get older, these things should get easier, but we have more responsibilities. So really honor yourself and honor what you need. So I love that. So I'm curious, Lacey and Emma, do you think you're, where do you think you fall? And we're going to test you and see. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I, I could listen to Kira all day. And I'm. she affirmed me, you affirmed me, Kira, because there was a point in my life where People were telling me, they were educating me about the wind down routine, take a bath, go lay in your bed, read a book, listen to a meditation. That wasn't me at all. And I felt lost because I trusted that this was good for me. And I trusted that it would make me a healthier being and, you know, all around great person, but it was not my jam. It was irritating to stop what I'm doing, cancel the day, go to the bath, go lay in bed. I stared at the ceiling. It just felt icky. And so thank you. You affirmed me because I don't think I'm that. And I'm just now (laughs) learning from what you said. 
I would guess before taking any, I may be a generator, but I want to take the test first and just make sure because I did hear a little bit, I heard seasons of my life and in every one Mm -hmm. of them. But a question is, was I forcing it? Was I really listening to my biomechanics? Was I really listening to my human design or was I just doing the thing that people were telling me to do? And that's, that's where the first book came from. I was just, I got really good at just being who people told me I should be at that season of my life. So did I get good at that or was I really identifying with my preferences? I don't know. I'll get back to you. (laughs) So interesting. Yeah, yeah, it it is. It's very interesting. Human design is important and protecting your energy is important. Yeah, the more you know about yourself, the better. Actually, that was funny. That came up at the Vixen gathering retreat this weekend, too, because we were talking about our Colby assessment. And I'm short on follow through and fact finding. I'm long on like quick start, which means I have new ideas all the time. And I'm starting (laughs) new stuff, right? Which most entrepreneurs are not all. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm I'm not great at follow through. And Emma, you and I have had this conversation, right? And Um, one of the participants goes, oh, well, that's kind of important. Like she was almost judgmental (laughs) that I wasn't going to follow through. I was like, ooh, coachable moment. Okay, I built an entire company (laughs) to multiple seven figures of revenue by putting systems and people in place to follow through for me. This is when, right? (laughs) Because I know I suck at it. Like, I know. I mean, it's so important to know your strengths and weaknesses and be honest about it and be vulnerable with your team, right? My brother is a phenomenal leader and his team knows not to expect him on time to be organized or to be consistent. (laughs) And he tells them that all the time, right? So, Emma, I'm curious your take on this because uh, you and I have talked about the follow through. So one, I want to hear, what do you think you are out of the different energy types? We're playing a fun game. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, honestly, I actually think even though I'm 42, that I'm still learning what this is and like only just becoming aware of it. Because like listening to this now, so my PA has gone through a lot of growth over the past couple of years. And about two years ago, I would just cram my diary with like call after call, onboarding, client calls, prospect calls. It seems stupid now, but on reflection, like at the time I would think, why am I so like burned out at the end of every single day? And there was, and two years ago, it was just like, right, we just need to go. We need to go. And there there was no thought to my own energies Mm -hmm. at all. And then about 18 months ago, a coach of mine was helping, like helping me with that kind of energy preservation, if you like, and what that looks like. And now without fail every single week, I have same as you, April, my Friday is completely unscheduled. My Wednesday is unscheduled. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, there's like slots in there to get new prospect work done, content created. Like, you know, that there's this a rhythm in there now. And if I look ahead and see that a calendar week is like packed, yeah. I immediately start to feel trepidation and go, I need to stop this because otherwise I'm going to end each day feeling totally like drained and burned. So I suspect I might be a bit more like your personality there, April. Mm-hmm. With the, was it with the uh, reflector? Was it? I'm a projector. April's yes, projector. Sorry, but I will definitely say, and I guess other people listening to this might be the same. I feel like I'm like in the middle of still learning about what that is. Mm-hmm. It was my thoughts always used to be just like, well, you just need to get on with it. Yeah, Do you know, like you just need to get it done. And now, actually, I realise the less I have in my calendar, the faster we move yes. forwards because. I've got more energy. I'm a better leader. I'm more empathetic. I'm not like, wow, this is taking too long. Please do you know, like everything is flowing through from me understanding what makes the days better and more creative for me. I love it. And Emma, as you were talking, I literally remember when I had my financial planning company. So I was very grateful because a lot of professions, you know, you're a doctor, you're a doctor, you're a financial advisor, you're a financial advisor. You don't learn to be a business owner. And if you own the business, (laughs) it's very important to operate as a business owner and in your profession, right? In fact, ideally, you get out of becoming a practitioner, which is when you can really scale. And we'll come back to that. But I literally, remember being trained how to do my calendar by a female coach that 
if we could just have you face to face with clients all day, every day and gave you an intravenous <laughs> tube and a catheter, it would be ideal, right? Which was extreme to tell my team like April needs to be face to face to clients. But you get these things programmed in your head. And it's very much the grind culture, male dominated yeah. energy. And you know, we're sitting here and obviously all of us are glowing with feminine energy. And I think Emma, what you're finding is you're probably tapping more into your feminine energy side when you are that productive. And, you know, sometimes the beauty of being a woman is we can go both, right? We can go masculine, we can go feminine. I like to say my masculine energy is my GSD, get shit done mode, right? And then like <laughs> feminine is receiving things, connection, relationships, creativity. So I think, you know, you're playing with that. And it's so important to be aware of that and learn how to transition, which to Lacey's point, it's different. Actually, one great thing for me is taking naps. So I avoid them because to Kira's point, sometimes if I take a nap, I am gone for like three to four hours. Like I have left planet Earth. I don't know where the <laughs> heck I am. And that is like my beauty. Like I love those naps, right? Especially yeah. when I was training for the Grand Canyon. I remember I'd come home after a difficult workout. Nothing feels better than a shower after you've been sweating your bed mm -hmm. off in Houston, Texas yep. and a nap, yep. right? So, um, so I love that. But I have actually started taking 20 minute naps. I'll just sit out on my balcony, set the alarm on my phone, close my eyes. And like, I really love that. It just something mm -hmm. about sleep helps me integrate what's going on. It helps me kind of cleanse and purge. Mm -hmm. And for me, walking does the same. Like literally at like 20 minutes, I feel my hips start to open. It's like my body just expands mm -hmm. and releases. So I love that. And Lacey, I'm going to take this moment to prod you because I know sure. you're talking about being a yoga instructor, but you and I, I challenged you to start your mindful movement journey because you really do that. I love what you do in your classes and with your clients. So my challenge to Lacey is that she travels a lot with her husband. He's pretty important at Southwest Airlines. So they're going around all the time. She'll talk about that in a second. And she was like, gosh, and let's get into this because your struggle with time right now is balancing that role, like being mm -hmm. the supportive, significant other um, versus building your empire, right? So mm -hmm. one idea yeah. I had for Lacey, because she works out every single morning, she moves her body, it's important to her. I was like, put a camera up there and do your mindful movement and let's have a membership so we can like travel around the world with you because I promise I would be going on to YouTube doing your mindful movement. So, you know, I think we have to, again, we talked about seasons in our life and sometimes we have to be creative with our time and leveraging our time. So let's go there. Lacey, first of all, yep. share with us how you're being creative with leveraging your time. And Emma, I'd love to hear from you because this is what you help your clients do, right? Right, with my PA. Yeah. So thank you. Being creative comes naturally to me, but I never thought about using it in my daily routines. I just thought the more disciplined, the better. And mm -hmm. then I had some coaches tell me, no, be in a flow state all the time. You know, it, yeah. I was like, okay, so I've tried out all the things of um, flow state. You can't be in a flow state all the time because yeah. that is the quickest way for your energy to just zap. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's gone poof and you don't know where it went and you didn't get any of your to-do done. So I'm a big proponent of routine and that's where the mindful movements came in because I am a believer in moving your body daily. Now, does it need to be a very aggressive workout every day? No. And I also don't think that the body, the human body should aggressively work out every day. But moving your body, it could be walking, it could be yoga, it could be dancing. A funny quick story is I was having a hell of a day last week and um, it just seemed like everything that could go not right <laughs> happened. <laughs> and I just had a moment, I was like, stop, because I do this thing with my energy. If it goes negative, y'all, I just clap, like stop it. And it's just like, you can, you can wave, you can clap, but it breaks up the energy around you. So at least you can see clearer Oh, well, that's not going in my direction. So I need to clap and then let's move in another direction. Mindfulness is huge to me. So I started dancing on that really crappy day last week. I just danced and I don't dance. I don't have rhythm, but I did my thing in the house and it changed my whole energy and it changed my whole perspective. I laughed because it's funny. And then I got on with my day, but 
mindful movement is really just moving your body. Let's get the energy flowing. Let's get the oxygen flowing. Let's get your blood flowing. And guess what? The creativity for your day is going to come. So mindful movement is very important to me. And I loved that, April, I loved that you pushed me toward blending Mm -hmm. an already career goal of mine was to get into front of more people. I was running out of day. Uh, I had the energy for the day, but I didn't have enough time to do everything I wanted to do. Guess why? I wasn't multitasking and I wasn't delegating. And so I've learned two really big, juicy lessons from April already. It's that delegate those things that really aren't your strengths. So I was, my energy was just nosediving into trying to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. And my confidence was nosediving. My time management definitely was nosediving because I'm not equipped to do it all myself. I am who I am. I'm designed the way I'm designed. And when I'm in that zone of genius, I call it, I'm rocking and rolling. And then yes, at the end of the day, like Kira said, I conk out and it doesn't take much at all. So I'm beginning to think I am that one human design (laughs) now that I'm talking out loud about it. But if you try to work against all that and do it yourself and don't delegate, it goes sideways. So yes, I, uh, I do start my day off with mindful movement. It works for me, but I would encourage listeners to find that, find that zone of genius for themselves and find out how their body works. You talked about the different roles that I had to play in the different seasons. Absolutely. That was a transition period that taught me a lot. When my husband got his job now, I didn't realize that it was going to include me getting a little full-time job with him. They expect the wife to go and serve in this role of entertaining, basically talking, communicating. I know this is a really shocker, but I don't get along with everybody. <laughs> um, it's not its not fun for me to have small conversation. Oh, I love yes. diving into what makes the world magical and uh, not everybody is open to that conversation. So I was having a really hard time with being that entertainer, if you will, at every event we went to and talk about your, your energy just draining. So I had to put in a routine before I go. So I know my schedule the week of sometimes, I mean, that's very last minute for me, but at least I get a week notice. Right. And so I plan out the routines. I plan out the pauses to regenerate my energy. I plan out what I'm going to do when, and it's sacred. I remember one time I was on a trip with him, with my husband and something shifted on us and I needed to be at a reception earlier than we thought. Well, that really it really took my mindful movement time in the morning. So Mm. guys, I declined. I said, you know what? What's priorities, right? I'm here. I'm here to support him. And that's a role that I'm really proud of, but he also honors my needs. And I said, you know what? I can't, I have an appointment with myself. And those are appointments on our, on our calendar. It doesn't say mindful movement. It says Lacey. (laughs) <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and he knows not to touch it. So he knows that if I'm doing that in the morning, I'm better for it later in the day. So I don't know if we have time to get into perspectives of my book, but it's really important that you honor your needs. Yeah. Once you know who you are, you know who you are and hold it sacred, even with your spouse, even with your significant other, even with your friends. It's sacred yeah. because you know you're going to show up 100% later. Yeah. And I also think it's important to surround yourself. I just chatted about this with people who understand too. So like last week, again, some members of the mastermind had come early and we were in beautiful Washington state. So I was like, great, I'm going to do a podcast here. Like I have this amazing mountain behind me. Like what a great backdrop, right? Well, then I guess they were like kind of upset. They weren't seeing me because I was filming all day. And I was like, oh, do you want to come over to my cabin? We can order lunch. But like the time zones, I got confused. And my <laughs> Lacey, uh, Lexi on my team goes, what the heck are you doing? You are recording four <laughs> podcasts a day and leading the mastermind the next two days. Like you need to have lunch alone. <laughs> I was yeah. like, thank no. you, mama. <laughs> like, yeah. But I mean, True. you know, because even, I mean, I very much understand myself. I coach about this. I like really guard that time, but we have those moments where we're weak or we feel guilty about something and we give in. So like, what are you doing to like bolster yourself to 
to. And as you surround yourself with people, making sure they're the right people that are keeping mm-hmm. you on track. And I love that. So Emma, I'm going to turn that over to you because that's your area of expertise and what you help your clients do. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your business and kind of what led you to start it, your area of expertise, and then how you guide clients through this. Of course. Yeah. So my business is called My PA and it provides, we call virtual assistants PAs, you call them exec assistants, I think. Yes. Like, yeah. So, or, and ultimately we, let's call it business support. Anything that a business owner might need to be doing is our sweet spot in supporting them. And I guess my story is, it's quite unusual in that I was a PA before I started my business, wanted to set up my own business. So I really understand the impact that a really great person by your side, like a Lexi, like somebody who goes, no, what are you doing? Like the impact of that. And then I also understand when you're a business owner, like you said earlier in the podcast, it's literally such an impactful thing to do, start a business, but there's no specific training for it. So most of us are just like, learning, winging it a lot of the time, figuring it out. So I know as a business owner how lonely it is, the roller coaster. So the whole premise of our business is about enabling our clients to what I call focus on the fun stuff, which is what Lacey kind of intimated just before that you should be focusing on what you do best yeah. and being true to that as well. Cause it's definitely one of my biggest energy drains. Cause I know so many of us wear like the superhero cape of whatever it is in the business, like no problem. I'll do it. I can do it. Cause you back yourself and you know that you would get it done, mm-hmm. but whether you're going to flourish doing that, whether you're the right person to do it, whether you should be doing it, whether you're going to feel totally drained at the end of it, like that, I am definitely, it's kind of, um, I don't know if it's self-sabotage or just me going, okay, it's going to be easier or quicker or do you know, and that kind of mindset to just keep doing stuff. But when the, like my education to our clients is when you really understand where your sweet spot is. Like for me, I learned a couple of years ago that the creating the content for the business, creating like the education, the value, like getting behind the camera, like that is where I needed to live. And I needed to give my team which it is definitely something I'm learning all the time and getting better at when you give the people around you and your team, like the permission the you mentioned before about being vulnerable and honest, yeah. like me saying, I'm actually not good at that. Like as an example, in the summer, we've launched a new service, which is all about following up our clients' leads. And because it's new and started it and I'm excited about it and I get stuck into it and then it's like, okay, operationally, how are we going to do this? And I start creating operations and I can see like the color drain out of my face because I I know the impact it can have. I know how to market it, how to get new clients, how to educate people about the service, but then the actual, do you know, the doing internally. And I still have to keep reminding myself of, okay, stop, Emma, you need to get Matt, your operations manager to do that. Because he's actually a million times better at it than me. Mm. And so, do you know, like just, it is a constant reminder for myself as well, even though this is the kind of business that I run, that I just need to live in what I do best because by far we go faster, mm-hmm. the the less I'm doing in the business. And I let them just be themselves, make decisions without me. And then, so yeah, so that, that's ultimately like what I'm talking to. And the thing that's so like pertinent for me in terms of the way we educate our clients is I'm on the journey too. And yeah. I understand I'm like, I totally get it. You know, the more that you, as your business gets bigger or whatever kind of business you want to grow, the more that you leverage the time around you, but leverage it so that you're focusing on the things you were born to do mm-hmm. and you love doing. And that's for me, most important in terms of our clients. Because it's not just about freeing up time to generate more revenue, or it's about like being able to finish at four o'clock so you can go and pick up the kids from school, or you can see family, or you can take the time for yourself. You know, it's not just about like revenue generating time and earning more money because I've delegated stuff to a PA. It's about actually just enjoying the journey and enjoying what, what you're doing. No, I love that. And if you wouldn't mind, and then I'd love to hear from Kira because she's had to finally delegate, put systems in place, et cetera. We'll talk about that. But Emma, you know, I think it's so important as you build a team because I didn't understand this at first with my first business, right? Someone walked in, they seem to be good. They seem to be smart. You like them. Okay, let's hire you. And so now 
I understand human design. I understand the Colby assessment. I understand the DISC assessment. Now we have working genius to see how we work together as a team. And it was so cool. We just hired a new person for our team who we're super excited about. And she came in with like an eight on follow through on her Colby. And we're all struggling to put systems in place and all that. That's what our weak part. And this is like her area of genius. So I'm like, amazing. We have a new operations manager. <laughs> cool. But, you know, in the past, I wouldn't have understood that. Like, I was hiring people I liked, I trusted, I was confident in. But I mean, really, when you hire someone for their unique genius, they win, you win, and like the team and company as a whole wins. So, can you talk to us simply? A lot of people listening are solopreneurs or business owners, they have smaller businesses or even larger. I think a hard thing for we women is to get that executive assistant, virtual assistant, whatever you want to call them. And I've had a few, and yet you educated me on what I should be looking for. So can you talk to us in the difference between, you know, a true executive assistant who's gonna come leverage your time versus like an admin or someone that will just help? you do admin duties. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it is important to understand in the beginning what you actually need, because if you hire the wrong one, it's just going to be more time, energy taken from Mm -hmm. you. So yeah, so I mean, internally, like when we are training our team to, because we ultimately internally, we have what we call personal assistants, and then we have exec assistants. And when we're training the exec assistants, our muse, if you like, is Pepper Potts from Iron Man, you know, Tony Stark's uh, assistant, because it's when I talk about an exec assistant, it's somebody who is thinking ahead, is thinking for you, is telling you not to double book a lunch because you need the time to yourself, is thinking about the next steps in a task. And very much what I will talk to our clients about, because there's such a wide, varied range of virtual assistants of different you know, like price points, skill sets, what they're able to do. And that so it's understanding very much whether you need somebody who is able to if you're the business owner and you're going to give them a task and they're going to need you to really have mapped out every single part of the process, given them a, an A to Z on how to do it. Like there's no gray parts of the process. It's also black and white. And, and there's definitely like in, in everybody's business, there is a, a need for that with some tasks, which are just like rhythmic process operational. But most often I think that when, uh, certainly when you're starting a business, when you're on the growth trajectory, when you're finding things out, what you really need by you is somebody that can think, can be intuitive, can be proactive, can have a two-way conversation with you. And so our exec PAs are trained to be that, okay, so if April's given me a task, I'm going to, I'm going to do the task, but I'm also going to go, well, what about this? Have we thought about that? I've booked it in for two weeks. What about the renewal? Do like all Mm -hmm. of the next steps. And so I do think when clients look for a virtual PA, and and as I say, like, it's not that anybody only needs an exec assistant, because that's not true because there's stuff in my business and it's just like, we just need all of this stuff doing. And and it's very admin based. It's Mm -hmm. just very like, here's the process, here's how to do it. But from a, a point of view of getting somebody to to really leverage your time, and and even like we talk so much about how you plan your week. So for our exec assistants, that's like okay, if, if a client you're looking at a client's diary, what does this look like to optimize their time? Are we looking at how long meetings actually last? Like are we booking them in for forty five minutes instead of an hour? You talked already about oh, I, I do a hard stop by like two p.m. or four p.m. because I'm done, and it's like understanding that mm-hmm. that's like for me true exec assistants because. Because then you can go, okay, well, nothing's so like my PA knows nothing's going in on Wednesday or Friday because it's just not conducive to the week going really well. And then so it's about that. There's just a big difference between the two different skill sets. So somebody's just going to get stuff done. You're telling them exactly how to do it. It's on you as the business owner to create the process, the steps, the playbook, the operational systems. Please just go and carry this out. And then an exec assistant is. I need help creating the playbook. Yeah. You know, like, can you help me create it? Yeah. Actually, the day of our launch party, so my team had flown in here so we could all be here. And I had my, I take private Pilates lessons and it was time for my Pilates lessons. And we had like, kind of like a lot of back end stuff, not working out technologically. I'm like, oh my God. And then my team was like, go to Pilates. Like they basically kicked me out the door because I would have just gotten in the way. I came back like happy, like feeling 
feeling yeah. good. So you really almost, for me, want someone who's going to manage you a little bit, which takes a lot uh-huh. of confidence. If you're, I mean, yeah, okay. you can, we're all pretty fierce here. It takes a lot of confidence on that person's <laughs> part to do that. And I think yes. they have to care about you and you have to care about them, which I think works yes. best as team. So we're running short on time, but I want to turn the baton to Kira because Kira is now expecting her first child. Congratulations. And Kira, you and I were having a private conversation and you shared with me how that kind of maybe kicked your butt a little bit to take some of the steps that Emma's talking about. So would you mind sharing with us? Because from so many of my clients, one thing I'm always pushing them to do is hire to leverage their time and understand the Mm -hmm. value of their time, right? So I'd love it if you could share with us kind of what you've been through recently and any ah ahas you had. Yeah, I would love to. And Emma, thank you so much. I was like taking notes and mental (laughs) notes as you were speaking. I was like, this is, it sounds so simple as you say it, but the intuition and the thinking ahead of me and like the creating the less work, I was like, oh my God, this is why it can be so exhausting to onboard people because sometimes it does create so much more work. So thank you so much. Now I want to listen to like all of your, any education you've ever put out there. I'm like, I think I need all of them, all of Emma's everything. (laughs) But so for me, when I started my business, I like Lacey had a background in corporate. It was very structured within itself. And it was actually, it's only two years that I'm full-time. I'm just coming up in my two year full-time and meeting your magic. And in the beginning, I think I was in a lot of fractured or broken feminine energy. So it wasn't like the beautiful feminine energy of like, you know, we flow like with intention supported by divine masculine. It was very much like, (laughs) to be honest, I'm going to run my business on coffee and energetics and just magnetize (laughs) shit to me, which honestly (laughs) it worked. Like I, I created a pretty good business based off of my contacts, relationships, just creating a little and like getting a a good amount in return from the universe. It was really beautiful, but there was a, there was a piece of the business. And I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but I always thought, because I ran my business meeting, I ran meeting your magic for about a year before I left my job. And before that I had been reading human design charts for about five years. So like it was a long time in the cup in the making when I ran my business and I had a nine to five, I was so in the masculine energy in the business. It was structure. I had, like I said, I was going to record a podcast. I was recording a podcast. I said, I was going to run a workshop. I'm running that workshop come hell or high water. There was nothing breaking me from my commitment to myself and my business. I thought I'm going to leave my full-time job and I'm going to have infinite space to create more within that structure and within that discipline and within that integrity. And it wasn't the case. More time created more doubt. It created more broken feminine energy of avoidance, of a little bit of victim mentality when stuff wouldn't work. Like, oh, I'm not hitting my monthly goal. Like, oh, she said she was going to buy. She didn't buy that link. Like feeling badly for myself Mm -hmm. versus showing up for the things I said I was going to do. And yet the business still did pretty well because I really, you know, I, I do a lot of work in manifestation and human design. So I was playing the energetics game, but I wasn't supporting myself in the divine masculine. But what I would do is, I'd let things kind of bottleneck and get really stressful. And then after all these things I'd been avoiding in the business would kind of stack up on top of each other, I'd be in this pressure valve and wouldn't you know, now who's getting shit done left and right, right? Like I am slaying the game, but now it's coming through and the the wounded masculine's coming through of me where I'm like, I gotta, it's gotta be controlled. It's gotta be rigid. Like no one can get in my way. It's gotta get done. And so I created in that way for like a very long period of time. It wasn't until opening the the portal for a baby to come through that I started realizing that this business I had set up for myself wasn't actually supporting the life I'm trying to create Mm -hmm. truly like the life I'm trying to create for me, but also like the life I am trying to call in and create, like, where is this baby going to fit in all of my like ebbs and flows? And it was the month that after we've been trying for a while, and it was the month that I actually hired some people to support me with email marketing joined a new program that had a little bit more structure for me so that I could have support sort of from the top as well as from the bottom and really started setting up systems in my business. It was actually the month we conceived. It was almost like my my nervous <laughs> system wasn't able to yes. process and allow. And so what, what it's looked like over the next couple of months, now I'm five months pregnant, but essentially I didn't really have any 
boundaries and my meter for like what I was going to say yes to in my business, every opportunity was good. I was like, of course, yeah, of course. It's exposure. It's it's amazing. Any podcast, anyone needs anything from me, like I'm here for it. I'm going to show up. And it really flipped. It went from like me being at the beck and call of the universe, any opportunity the universe was going to send me to really anchoring in and creating the structure within my business and deciding like my business first and then anything that's going to support it from a strategic standpoint, or maybe like I'll make some exceptions for some things that just feel energetic so good and are so fun. They're going to light me back up, but it's not like a free for all here where I'm just riding on the wave of like whatever comes to me. It's, it's a lot more discipline and it's been necessary because I shared with April before we press record, but like my energy, I don't feel like a manifesting generator anymore. I don't wake up like tank full of gas and super excited. I can do something that's so fulfilling to me, even like have conversations like this a couple back to back and then I'll need to go take a nap. Whereas before I would get off with a client and I'd be like, let's go take over the world. Like the energy I received from doing the work I did was so high that I could just keep on creating and keep on making and say yes to more things. And that's not the case anymore. So I've had to be really diligent with really listening to my sacral response, but a little bit like step out of the business and really ask myself, does this support the big picture of what we're creating? And does this support the life I'm making in the business I'm building? Is it good for me now and later? Or is it just good for me now? Because there's some of these low hanging fruits that are like, they just feel good now. They feel like these little wins, but they're not actually in the direction of the business. And April, you said earlier, we have three months left of the year. <laughs> I'm banking on every single one of those months. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> the baby comes in February. So yeah. I'm like, yes, <laughs> like nothing is more important than October, November, and December. But just looking at that time with like such reverence, instead of being afraid of space and time in my calendar, yeah. just, I don't have time for the limiting beliefs. I don't have time for the inner critics. I just don't have time because I literally don't have time. Like we got shit going on. <laughs> So I love that. And I kind of created that sense of urgency for myself. I am not pregnant, but uh, just to be clear in case my parents are listening. So uh, right. anyway, but no, I have this goal because I was a lawyer, then I own my own financial planning company. And I've always worked like these crazy hours that I know about myself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to work three weeks a month, Monday through Thursday. I leave Friday open. If I want to do work, great. Because sometimes doing work gives me energy, right? And, you know, we're going to do 5 million in revenue next year. And then I'm going to teach all the other women how to do the same, right? But like, I am so committed to that vision and so excited about it because so many women I run into, and I I would love to hear if y'all have the same experience and we're running short on time. So I will make this quick. But they think that they have to sacrifice to bring in abundance for their families, right? And I just want to show you don't have to sacrifice. You just have to think different and shift your perspective, right? So Kira, I love you sharing your story because I think most of our listeners are moms. They've been in your position. They understood how they had to completely pivot their life with this new perspective, right? And so for anyone listening, I want to challenge you to take that experience and how do you duplicate it in different ways in your business and your life, focusing your energy to do what's important. So I I know we have to go soon. So what I'd love to ask is what did you ladies love about our conversation today? So if we can be brief and bold, bold and brief, let's put it that way. (laughs) Go for it, Kiara. It looks like you're ready. I just, I feel like it has been so powerful sitting with the three of you and I've learned something from each of you. And April, I know we didn't really have you like on the hot seat quite like we're not asking you questions, but you've said some really like really powerful things. And I, my favorite uh, was when you said that would we hire out for the things that we're not good at. And I know that sounds so simple, but I love that you kind of were like, yeah, I scored this on the on that test. And, yep. And I have a team and like I build multi-million dollar businesses. And it's like, <laughs> yes, like we don't actually have to be good at everything. Yeah. And it was it's such a good reminder. And now because of Emma, now I know who to hire <laughs> versus who not to hire. So for me, this conversation feels very divine. So thank you. Thank you all so much. And because of Lacey, I know I really can protect my calendar. I love it. Thank you so much, Kira. Lacey. 
And isn't that a load off, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many decades did we go through life thinking we've got to do it all? We've got to prove it to the man. We've Mm -hmm. got to be the man and the woman. And I mean, what a load off that we get to join together like this and realize that, yeah, there's Mm -hmm. strong women out there who are on our side, who we are lifting each other up and that we can delegate some of that stuff that doesn't come naturally to us. There are people out there where that's their zone of genius. So they're going to help us get where we want to go and we're going to help them get where they want to go. And all together, collectively, it's brilliant. The greatest thing I learned today was what a privilege it is to have self-awareness. I think all of us shared stories from different parts of our life where we were trying to make it happen, but we didn't have all the tools. And I'm feeling Mm. right now, I want to encourage all of y'all, I feel like we have the tools and more tools are coming, but what a powerful place to be in right now. And even with the viewers to use the tools we have to use the stories from our past to generate more using all of this awareness and to delegate as appropriate. That self-awareness is just, it's magical. I'm really excited. And like Kira, I think it was very, it's divine magic right here. And I think this happens every time groups of women get together. I felt it a few times. So thank you for that. Thank you, Lacey. Emma. Yeah, I am. Honestly, totally agree. And the thing for me and why I love talking to you and being on these podcasts so much, April, is because this talk around like the feminine energy, the masculine energy, it's something that is actually relatively new to me over the past couple of years. And I feel like I spent my 30s just like head down. The only way to make this Mm -hmm. happen is to absolutely graft to the max to have you know just like you just go just go just go just go and like and now the more I I'm aware that the the more you're in tune with it the better it gets like it's always something I've ignored before or not really been educated on and I would almost kind of like probably five years ago do an eye roll at it do you know like be a bit more like really but now the like actually living it and and being more in tune with what I'm good at when I feel like elevated to do good tasks when I feel energy drained the more I understand that I feel like the more optimized my my time my week what I'm getting done is I love it thank you so much Emma so we are so short in time but if you want more of these lovely women just like you can tell I can't get enough of them so we're all so busy so the time we can get together is so precious to me thank you all for joining us but if you'd love to hear more take the human design assessment learn more from Emma read Lacey's books don't forget please go to vixengathering.com and subscribe to our podcast you get all of this automatically sent to you as e each episode drops. So that's pretty phenomenal. In the meantime, you can go to this episode's webpage on vixengathering.com, follow them on Instagram, find them on social, find their web pages, all these beautiful resources they're talking about. So find us there, join us there. And if you're watching this and we touched you, please don't hesitate to leave us a rating, a review. We love your feedback. And what I'd love to share is today was such a beautiful reminder that my spiritual teacher always says, why do you want to carry around judgment? Let that go, right? That's not our job. And I think that for some reason, we women were so socialized to judge each other for so long. Let's let that go and celebrate our differences and celebrate our beautiful energies. And let's just go out there and make magic together. So again, thank you to our beautiful guests. Thank you to you for tuning in. We'd love to hear from you about the impact on your life. And I can't wait to talk to you soon. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit vixengathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.